everyone. Welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. We're working on a bit of an art project. I'm not quite sure what to call it. So if you have any, please insert. We're just going to call it an artsy project at this point. So this was a gift, okay? So I'll let you take a little good look at it there. And it's been layered fabrics, sewn with a curve, and then lots of accent uh, threads, multicolored threads, variegated threads, uh, some little thin, uh, little uh, fabulous fibers like embellishments, like these little strings and stuff like that. <clears throat> and lots of fancy stitches done on the machine. Okay, so this is a great way to take opportunity for that. So what they have done is they have sewn it very much in a similar manner I have done here in layers. And then they've gone and taken off a chunk of it and then cut out whatever circles that they want and then taken those and placed it over there and applicated it down. Okay, so that's what has gone on here. I did notice that with this one, it had the center piece the yellow and then it had the oranges and then the, it echoed. So it just copied each other on the way out. I did mine a little bit differently, kind of because I was hoping for a bit of a night sky or, you know, just a different kind of sky. Um, of course, I have lots of blues and greens. <laughs> so here we are using some of those. So this is what I've done so far. I'm going to show you the back so maybe you can see a little bit more of the stitches. And I used some variegated thread. I used some blue. I used some green. Of course, there's blue and green in here. And now I'm just going to pretty much take off a chunk and put either, I've, I've got my little, I have some moon uh, shaped templates here. I could use a couple of those and then a couple of circles and stitch all that down and mine would be done. It's my own creation, right? And of course you can add uh, beads and there's of course some of this furry little thread there that you could also use. Um, you know, there's lots and lots of things. So you just go hit the craft store and you'd be happy in no time. So I wanna show you how I got there, okay? Cause it's a long process, it really is. So I'll show you by here. So here's a strip of green. This is actually left over from the green braid quilt and it is six inches long, okay? Or six inches wide, sorry. And it's as long as whatever you are needing to, but make sure you're adding a whole extra chunk because you need to cut up a bit of it to put back on to the main section, okay? So I overlaid it a little bit. Now this is where you can, whatever works for you, up or down, so you can visually see where that green, that dark green ends. Okay, hopefully everything's out of the way. And then you just go and you cut a curve. And you're cutting the curves on both fabrics. So when you take away the bottom part of the green and the top of uh, the dark green and the top part of the light green, they actually fit together. And that's what helps keep these curves together, okay? So I'll show you what I mean. Just go like this. Okay, and I know I don't need this. And see how that fits perfectly? That's gonna be our sew piece and we don't need that. So that you can actually easily save for another bit of a landscape. If you're doing so, like a, a small quilt, you could actually chop that off there, layer it in behind. You got yourself some mountains, bibbidi bobbidi boo, put some sheep on, everybody's happy, okay? So now what you wanna do is you want your highs and your lows. You're like, okay, well that's not a straight seam. How do I sew that? Easy, okay? Pop a pin in here, here, and here. Highs and the lows of those peaks, okay? Make it easy, okay? And you're just gonna ease the fabric where it needs to go, and it'll just be just fine. You will see. Okay, because you're just gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around here, all the way across, okay? And all the way down, following. Okay, let's get that out of the way. So you're gonna do that for every piece. So then when you go to lay the next piece down, you lay another piece over top and you have just that bit of light green that you're looking for to be able to do the curve, okay? And you can do little curve, big curve, any kind of curve, it's up to you. It's your landscape, okay? Or your art. So be creative. And use many colors if you really like a, oops, what happened here? Oh, I guess I turned it off. Whoopsie, sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Because I asked Pop if he was ready and he said yes. <laughs> but sometimes he was busy, so. All right, so you just keep a quarter inch seam allowance 
and you're just making sure to keep the edges of these two fabrics right next to each other. Okay, one right on top. It's gonna take a little persuasion, but it will happen. And then you can always, if you got some that are looking like they might let a pucker up, you can just relief cut those little curves, just a little bit, snip in just a smidge, just, just before the stitches. Don't go to the stitches, because you just never know. Just a little bit before. Okay, take your pin out, and then just keep the curve, and keep the fabric, those two edges, right next to each other, and you'd be very surprised at how easy this becomes. It's just a little fabric manipulation. You can do it. You can do it. Had some bunch of scraps you're not quite sure what to do with. Maybe make a little art piece for your room. Maybe you're something for, you know, one of the grand munchkins or something. Okay, I, I thought maybe I felt a little bit of a fold. I was just checking. And if you feel that, put the foot up, straighten it out a little bit. You know, it's not a race. We're trying to make art here, right? It's not a race on how, who can get the quilt done the fastest. Take your time, be creative. And of course, I did stitches on the seam and I did stitches across and around and down and over. You know, it's a, a, a you know, I guess if you want to call it a thread waster, if you got some funky threads you're not quite sure you to do with, pop them on there, clean up a bunch of spools. I'll clean up your thread stash in no time at all. Okay, and then we're gonna press this. Like I said, if you need to clip some curves, then clip the curves. Okay, all right, there we go. There you go, so you see the start of the idea? We'll give that a little press, you can, and then you just keep going and going and going and going with your little strips of fabric. I used a big green one here, but you can, you get the idea. So let me just press that. Like I said, if you're having some issues, maybe if you did too sharp of a curve or too, uh, for up or down or anything like that, then you can always uh, put some relief cuts in, okay? So there's your start. And then once you have all your little bits and bobs going on, you wanna put it on a stabilizing fabric, whether it's just an extra strip of fabric that you have laying around, some you know denim you're never gonna use, whatever. Just put, making sure you're stitching because you're doing a lot of threads on this. So you wanna really stabilize that fabric so it's not gonna you know pucker everywhere, okay? So that that's how you just keep going. Any kind of curves, up, down, around, whatever you like, okay? All right, so now we have this. And these are my shapes. So, and I'm gonna go to the one, I kind of squared it up a little bit, I tried to. And my iron touched it, it did not like it. <laughs> this, did, this stuff does not like heat, <laughs> let's put it that way. Okay, now, let's say, just cut a chunk off and I wanna make sure I can get at least some circles out and like a moon out. I don't mind a couple of these moon shapes and this is my planet or my atmosphere or whatever. It's got lots of whatever I like in there and I like moons. So I'll do like, you know, two or three and two or three. We'll go from there, sorry. All right, now make sure you're cutting a nice even chunk off. And maybe if there was one side you liked a little less than the other, like on the side, then, you know, chop that side off because you're just gonna make shapes with it, all right? I, I'm not really particularly uh, mind at either one of these, so we'll just do this, okay? And then I'm gonna place those shapes on here in different, um, like, you know, take the dark to green and put them up here and take the light blues and put it down there and mix it all up and around. I thought I had my pencil here. Oh, there it is. Okay. So you just trace out whichever ones you like. Try and get a lot of the thready bits on there because that's kind of really what accents the pieces. Like this looks, it's got like some little ribbony bits on there. And, uh, and then of course the one that kind of looks like a bit of feathers. So... Try to utilize your material. Okay, I'm not gonna see that pencil on there. Ooh, there we go. You won't see it, so it's all right. Hope everybody's having a fantastic Saturday so far. And that's just a guideline. It doesn't have to be that shape. You know, I just wanna make sure I can get a nice moon, moon cut out in here. Yes, I can, just fits. 
just, just fits. And of course, I have three shapes. These actually are uh, long arm rulers, but I've used them for many different things, including this, little templates. No one says they just have to be a long arm ruler. Okay. And then around. Okay. And then I can do a small one. I'll do a small one from down here. Make sure I got some blues. I'm making sure I'm kind of coming over a couple of shapes and colors here to make sure I can accent a darker piece, piece on the other side, right? So, you know, you, you think about it. Think what you really like and what you want. I've got stitches here, stitches there, stitches here, and stitches there. That's, that's making me happy. I might be able to get another circle in here. Yep. So that's also... You know, if you only want to put four or five, then put four or five. Make stars. If you like the stars, make a star shape. Put a whole bunch of star shapes on there. Uh, you know, or or make your kid's name with it across. I mean, be creative. No, the only your only uh, limitation is your imagination. Okay. Well, how about welcome, or love to sew, or. Crazies are here. <laughs> Warning. <laughs> Crazy quilters exist. <laughs> okay, so that's one, two, three, four. And then I can just make a couple little circles. And there we go. I can probably put one here and one there. And then I'll spread out on the top. So there we go. We'll have six little cutouts. Okay. And, of course, you can use different size circles. I just picked this. I may, you know, choose to uh, make them smaller once I get them cut out. Or you can make a big one and a bunch of small. Okay, there we go. Easy peasy. Now we'll just trim those out. Did I put the scissors there? Nope, I put them here. Okay, so let's do that real quick. And then we're just gonna attach these down with a nice decorative zigzag, or you can use the nap of the K stitch. And you know, again, this is where it comes in fun and handy. You could even take, you know, um, embroidery floss and get your big needle out and just hand stitch them on. Okay, so there's a green one, just plain green, but that's okay. I like the stitches on there too, so we can put that up there. And this one's got green and blue. That's a moon. I know, and you're like, oh, I'm cutting through all my stitches. That's okay. You're making art. It's okay when you're making art. There's no rules. No regulations. No police going to come and say, hey, that looks weird. <laughs> At least that's probably what they'd say to my... Oops. Okay, must have been just a piece underneath. There we go. And then a, a nice moon. I can put him up over here. You know, as long as it's contrast from the color that it's cut out to where it's going to be placed. You know, that's what uh, makes some of these really stand out. Now, if you make this, I can't wait to see it. So post to our Mama Pop Quilt Shop Mafia group. If you want to join, there's only a couple of very simple little questions. Just just to make sure you love the the, the art of, you know, fabric and stuff like that it's we're not asking you for your firstborn or anything so you know please join us there we're a very encouraging group we'd love to see what you're doing whether it's in the garden or your favorite hobbies you know wherever we like we like to see and hear everything oh we can put that one up here there we go and then one more moon like i said you can or actually two more you can do all sorts with these the, the sort of idea right Great for, you know, somebody like space, the planetarium, that sort of thing. You could do stars in the sky. Uh, actually, that little shape right there kind of reminded me of a Christmas ornament. What about a whole Christmas theme sort of thing? Make it a Christmas tree. You know, all the layers are green and green and green, and they cut it in the shape or whatever. I mean, it's, it's there. The ideas are there. Run with it. I want to see. <laughs> show me, show me, show me. Okay. Almost there. Really, that's it's a long part to get here. So, so set your time ahead and and think about the whole process and get your threads and all the you know funky threads you want to use. Okay, and then this moon he can go like down there, sort of thing. Okay, so you know I can mix and match, place them where I want. Maybe I don't like that one. I want to put the moon down there. I want to add more circles. 
keep going, okay? It's it's whatever you want to do. All right. So I kind of like him up there. He's fine there. Uh, let's do that there. Here, down here. There we go. Nope. There we go. Whatever. Just, and then pin it and go. <laughs> pin it and run. <clears throat> and this was the variegated thread I used. I had a little bit of green and a little bit of blue, uh, but it's got yellow and orange and everything else in it too. So I figured whatever, maybe I could even just uh, stitch around with that or we figure it out. All right, so zigzag, kind of put it a little bit close together, stretch the stitch out a little bit. Of course, and you can pin these if you want to pin them down. Stick them wherever you want to. Just try and make them so they're a little bit different than where they were sitting, right? Okay, and then zip around with a ziggity zaggity stitch or a applique sort of stitch, whenever you like. Like I said, we'll just move these because they're just going to shift anyways. <laughs> Don't forget to lift your foot when you're going on the curves. stitches you probably never would have thought you had a use for and you've been looking at going well what would I use that for ever this sort of fun art project and if you add some beads afterwards it would still add to a lot to the whole effect like look if that just changes it with the whole little thread around the outside I think it looks lovely okay so we'll go over here and we'll put this moon I think we had him down here somewhere because he had the opposite I think I want to put him the other way there we go Okay, we'll start on the outside curve first. And just move things around as you need. If you need to put a pin in, then put pins in. Okay, and then if you need, if you're on a curve, you gotta stop on the outside and twist a little bit, and then a couple more stitches, stopping on the outside, twist a little bit more, couple more stitches, outside, twist a little bit more, and there we go, rock that corner. Well, this part was the race, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> them on. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. There's no race. There we go. Okay. It's all coming together. I'll pick another piece. We'll stick them over here. There we go. I kind of like that. We'll stick it right there. There we go. Awesome. You can always cover up, you know, this one has got a little bit of a kind of a puckery fold in there. Cover it up. No one's going to ever know. I think that was a bit of my stabilizing fabric. I think I, um, I pinned it and didn't go from the center out and doing some, like maybe some base stitches at first. So that's okay. Live and learn. Make sure that's laying flat. I don't want any puckers around my outer edge, okay, of my planet or moon or whatever it is. Okay, there's another one. Now let's do this here. No, nope, what? There. No, I want the bowl to go in the same way. There. And we got a couple more. He can go up there. creative. <laughs> Do what you want. <laughs> okay, I think we're okay here. It's a little foldy bit there, but I'm not too concerned. Okay, let's plop it. Let's do it sideways. I 
I meant so the lines were not <clears throat> all lining up. Okay. Add a little bit a different texture to the fabric by laying it sideways instead of up and down. another moon in a in a circle planet whatever okay so let's put that over here and of course it doesn't matter which way it goes of course uh, the way it's gonna hang so you can put your shapes any way you like I think a kid's name would be awesome or like a play zone in the basement sort of thing, you know, what you call your zone. We call Munchkin Zone the dungeon. <laughs> I'm sure he'd love a sign that says the dungeon. <laughs> It's usually how I joke with the kids when they come over because they'll see the bin and they go, oh, because every basement seems to have toys for kids, right? But not my basement. <laughs> I go, you don't want to go down there. It's a dungeon down there. <laughs> it is. Almost there. So I don't know who actually made it. It was just gifted to me. So I don't have a chance to say thank you for the inspiration. And I know there have been a few questions about it. Uh, people have seen it up on my wall behind me. Even customers have said, oh, did you make that? I go, no, I wish I could or did. Did I lose a moon? I think I lost a moon. I lost a moon. Over here? Oh. How far over? Under my chair. Oh. Jeepers creepers. Okay, sorry. <laughs> hey, where did it go to? Okay, now it was going to go up here somewhere. I kind of made him symmetrical, one on either side, so maybe I should pop this here instead, instead of up there. That, then that way it doesn't look so symmetrical. Yeah, we'll do that there. All right, so this will be the last one, and then I'll show you, and hopefully you tackle on this sort of little project. <clears throat> it's a great way to use up some scrappy bits, and you can use textured fabric and, and small prints and stuff like that. There's the small prints in here. There's one with the little trees, and there's a bunch of little circles on this one, and that looks like a water dots, and, and of course, there's some batiks and some just some regular fabrics. It's a mix of fabrics. <clears throat> Same here for me. I've mixed some, you know, flannels and some cottons and some... Not sure what that is, but it feels really neat. And of course you can mix up your threads that you're attaching your appliques on. You can make it, the, the variegated would be, I think, really stunning. I've noticed that on some of these, it's all variegated all the way around. So it looks quite nice. I only had the one variegated and a little bit of red. That was it. All right. So there we go. Call it the fun art project with planets and moons or something, okay? So I hope you try something. I really do. And hopefully I kind of, you know, either way you want to do it. Okay? It's up to you. Take care, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend. See ya. Bye-bye.